In this session, I'm going to find the acceleration of an object given its velocity versus time graph. What you should recall is that acceleration is the change in velocity per change in time, or how fast the velocity changes. Now, on this graph, the acceleration represents the slope of the line. So on a velocity versus time graph, the acceleration represents the slope of the velocity curve. Now in this case, I'm going to pick two points. In this case, they're the easiest points that I can recognize. I'm going to call my initial velocity 10 meters per second. So this is the velocity when time equals zero. And for my final velocity, I'm going to choose the point where it crosses the time axis, where in this case the final velocity will be 0 meters per second. Now the time it takes to go from 10 meters per second to 0 meters per second is 10 seconds. So I would start by looking at, if this is my initial time, then my final time is this point. And so delta t in this case is going to be 10 seconds. So in this case the acceleration is going to be 0 meters per second minus 10 meters per second divided by the time it takes to change that velocity, in this case is 10 seconds, so I can rewrite this as 0 meters per second minus 10 meters per second, which is negative 10 meters per second. Divide that by 10 seconds, and when I do that, I can simplify this out a little bit to be negative 1 meter per second per 1 second, or often written as negative 1 meter per second squared. Now what this actually means is that every second that this object is decelerating or slowing down, this object's going to change in velocity by one meter per second. So if this is its initial velocity of 10 meters per second, after one second, this object's velocity should change now to be nine meters per second. So this object is slowing down and the acceleration is negative one meter per second squared. After one more second, this object should go from 9 meters per second to 8 meters per second, and the acceleration remaining constant is still going to be negative 1 meter per second squared. Now we can summarize all of these results into the form of a simple equation, and that equation is just derived from the definition of acceleration, which says that acceleration is the change in velocity per change in time. So I'm just going to rewrite this now as the change in velocity equals the acceleration times the change in time. And remember that this term, delta v, can be rewritten as v final minus v initial, which is now equal to acceleration times the change in time. So if I want to find the final velocity of an object, I can now write that as v final equals v initial plus the acceleration times time. So suppose I want to know how fast this object is traveling after, say, a time interval of five seconds while it's accelerating at a rate of negative one meter per second squared, given the initial velocity 10 meters per second, I can now use this relationship without having to resort to essentially adding or subtracting velocities. And to do that, all I need to do is say that my final velocity equals my initial velocity plus the acceleration times how long I've been slowing down for. Now in this case, our initial velocity would be 10 meters per second plus a negative one meter per second squared times a time interval of five seconds. And notice that this second squared cancels out with this second. And what I get is 10 meters per second plus a negative one times five or minus five meters per second. And when I do that, that works out to be five meters per second. Now the one last important thing to bring up about this equation is that it represents the equation for the velocity versus time graph. So if we look back up here at our velocity versus time graph, we can represent this line as v final equals v initial plus the acceleration times time. So this is a nice straight line relationship describing what I often call the velocity versus time curve. Now, one last thing about representing the velocity curve in this way. So we often write the equation v final equals v initial plus the acceleration times time, but Another way to do that, which is equally valid, is to write this as v final as a function of time equals whatever the initial velocity is 
plus the acceleration times time. And when you see something like this, it's very similar, in fact it is identical, to the equation that you've often seen for a straight line in math that says that f of x equals some constant which shifts the graph either up or down plus the slope of the line times the independent variable. And we'll pick this up in another video.